G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, what an interesting weekend we have and particularly what an interesting Monday we have. Trying to work out what happened, we've gone from nearly $62,000 right down to, I think we got to around about sort of $53,000. So, did the whales and exchanges dump on us? That is the question. Well, I guess we're going to find out fairly shortly, but let's have a little bit of a look. Now, the market is rebounding a little bit, so I got down into the, uh, I think, 1.74 something trillion dollar mark, so it's recovering a little bit. BTC dominance has dropped slightly, ETH dominance has risen slightly, and the gas prices are rising, which makes me think there's something going on there. And I think it might be people are starting to buy back into coins. So now some of the uh, Tether and USDC and things like that, which is generally on the Ethereum chain, is probably starting to move, and I think people are starting to buy this dip. And in all honesty, I think it might be the smart money that's buying and the dumb money that's been selling. And there's an article that we'll go into very shortly that sort of supports that. Whether that's completely true or not, I don't know, but I would sort of suspect that that's probably what is going on, actually. I think smart money are accumulating Bitcoin and dumb money not so much dumb money, because if they're taking profits, then all good. But if it's dumb money panicking and selling, well, then that's exactly what they are. They are dumb money. But let's have a look. All right, there's a bit of green here, so it's a bit of a mixed bag that we can see. But what's really pumped in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, orbs. It's come from outside the top 100, obviously pumping 700% in seven days. I would absolutely be taking my initial investment out straight away if I was up 700%. That's just, yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. But look, pumped 65% in the last 24 hours, so pretty good, not too bad at all. Sirecoin, there you go, sort of out of the doldrums, had a pretty big pump. Reserve rights token done well. Ravencoin, ontology. Look, there's some really good gains here. And for me, anything above 15% in 24 hours is is a good gain. For cryptocurrencies, for six months, that's good in traditional stocks. Like you get 15%. So for us to do that in 24 hours is good. And look, you just go next door over to the right-hand side and they've all pumped even more. So they're doing quite well, all these coins. And then after that, we've still got a fair few coins that are getting still reasonable returns. I mean, 8.4% is nothing to you know, throw shade at for Voyager, Digibike, Kasama. Even look, XRP's had some good news. I don't know what's, well, hot enough it's had good news, but I mean, it's good news that the price has gone up. I don't know what's happened there, but obviously something's happened there. And look, a qu a quite a number of low uh, single, well, high single digit uh, gains, I should say. So things are looking pretty good there, but what about losses? Because I'm going to say there were definitely some losses. Right, Holo, again, you're up 140% over seven days, 10% is pretty reasonable. Matic has pulled back a little bit, but still up 76% over the last seven days. I'm really bullish on Matic. I have no idea what the price may go to, but there's just so much going for it. Again, it's now multi-chain, it's multi-solution. So yeah, super bullish on Polygon. Hedera Hashgraph has been doing quite well, bit of a pullback, but look, it's already starting to recover. So we'll have to wait and see. But look, there's one coin here that's really had, and not even a bad loss, but just, you know, a sort of a semi-reasonable loss. And that coin though is still up 140% for seven days. So they're doing all right. So really the losses have been quite minor. And then you're just getting into sort of single digit losses. I mean, Polkadot, you know, down 3%. Uniswap down sort of 3% as well. And these aren't really, you know, awful losses, although the graph is really having quite a pullback. So uh, me personally, I'm keeping an eye out for another buy-in point. I really like the graph. Uh, and I think it is, I remember bringing a story to you a while ago that they said it was six months, and I don't know how long it's been now, but after about six months, coins were being unlocked from the graphs initial investors and they were able to sell so that may be some of what's going on here still really i'm super bullish on the graph uh do some research into it uh, it's all about data and things like that i really like it and again chilies obviously leveling out leveling out a little bit and having a pullback but i mean still up 170 percent for seven days so if you've lost three percent from 170 percent you're not complaining pundi x 
And again, no major losses though. Again, this is the only one in the top 100 that, you know, would kind of hurt a little bit, but not really if you're still up 140% for the week. All right, so moving on, let's have a look at the chart. So we can see it's done this before. Bit of a descending triangle, boom. Descending triangle, boom. And what we've got here forming is a very, very small descending triangle. But what we're trying to find out is, is it over? I mean, look, here we got 9 o'clock in the morning, UTC time, and we have a bit of a spinning top candle, so it's a little bit of indecision. The CME gap did get closed. And now we're just waiting to see, is this going to be part of a bigger sell-off? Where again, maybe we come back down and you know retest these levels all the way down here, $45,000. Maybe even lower, maybe we come down to sort of around the $42,000 range. Somewhere down around about sort of here. Possible, just not sure if it's likely. I do think this is dumb money panic selling that's what i think it is hence why you know all that money uh, got liquidated in the longs and that because that's what a lot of, you know not all dumb money is in uh leverage trading but look a lot of dumb money is in leverage trading in all fairness and that's why so many people got liquidated and then they've panicked and sold you know probably more bitcoin uh because they lost bitcoin that's generally what i would say has happened here but we'll, we'll wait and see that might not be the case but that's what i think it is and i do think we're still getting ready to make our way back up but i wouldn't be surprised if we travel sideways for a while it could be a couple of weeks maybe even another month or two before with a lot of volatility before we can make that next leg up and for me it's the eighty thousand dollar mark that's what i'll be watching for i think there'll probably be a bit of a sell-off before we get to eighty thousand I've said this before, I think it is the $20,000 brackets and it's shown, you know, we had trouble getting past 20,000. We had trouble getting past 40,000. We've had trouble getting past 60,000. That's really where we've been kind of stuck getting around here, uh, dipping about. So it's going to take a while and then we make the move towards 80. I think we'll have a sell off before 80, 77,000, 75,000, 74,000, somewhere around about there. And it's just going to be rinse and repeat. I do see this playing out for quite some time. Again, I've said this a number of times. I'm not sure what the peak is going to be. My minimum target for the peak would be around sort of 84-ish thousand, 88,000. I think that would be the bare minimum our cycle high could be. I do expect it to go higher, but I'm just keeping an eye out for that. My gut feeling tells me the $100,000 mark is going to be quite difficult to get past. I think we're really going to struggle there and I think there's going to be a big sell-off somewhere around the $100,000 range that's probably going to crush a lot of people. That's that's my belief anyway and I think we could get to around about 100000 and possibly end up almost all the way back down here around kind of 60. I don't know if we'll get down to 50s but I wouldn't be surprised if we went from, you know, a little bit under a hundred thousand, say ninety-two thousand dollars, and we come all the way back down into the sixties, maybe even into the sort of high fifties, somewhere in and around about here. Could be wrong. Time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, again, we've had a bit of a sell-off, and now the market is slowly bouncing back. But that is a bit of an indecisive candle at the moment. A bit like a spinning top with a big wick down below. So interesting times. We'll keep an eye out. All right, let's get on to some news stories. All right, BitMEX executive surrenders in New York and pleads not guilty. All right, Ben Delio, one of the founders and co-owners of embattled crypto derivatives exchange BitMEX, has surrendered to a U.S. authorities has surrendered, sorry, to U.S. authorities in New York, according to Bloomberg. Delio or Delo, I'm not sure how to say it. Delo was arraigned remotely before U.S. Magistrate Judge Sarah L. Cave during a proceeding on March 15. He pled not guilty to all charges and was released on a bail bond of $20 million. Now, interesting here, it says the bail terms stipulate that he is permitted to return home to the U.K. and await trial. So, yeah, I guess it depends on how long he's, it's been since he was in the U.K. about whether he considers that home now or whether the U.S. or the Bahamas or wherever he's been is home but it seems like you know things have caught up with bitmax there's you know a lot of rumors that they were doing lots of funny stuff and i guess you know the long arm of the law if they have been doing that has caught up with them and i'm guessing we'll probably 
deliver some, you know, yeah, I'd say it's probably going to be some pretty swift justice. But look, I could be wrong. This could, you know, drag on for months and years. Who knows? We'll wait and see. But not good for the owners and co-founders and all the rest of it of BitMEX. The law is definitely after them. All right, this is the story that I found interesting. And this is what I was talking about. So, long-term investors are hodling with 95% of Bitcoin trades involving young coins. So this big sell-off, it's been by coins that haven't been owned for very long. According to research by on-chain analytics provider Glassnode, 90% of the Bitcoin changing hands last was, uh, hang on, hands last was last moved less than three months ago on the blockchain. Glassnode's March 15th, uh, the week on chain report, found that just 5% of spent outputs are more than 90 days old, indicating the vast majority of Bitcoin moving on chain are young coins. And that's people getting into the leverage game and all the rest of it. Other data from Glassnode has found that addresses that have been holding Bitcoin for at least three years has significantly increased their holdings over the past six to 12 months, while short-term hodlers have been taking profits since the start of 2020. So there you go. According to this now, you know, it could come out later that that was wrong. You know, we always have something saying one thing and then we find out that they were wrong and something else was happening. But I do trust uh, Glassnode. It seems most of this sell-off has simply been young, dumb money getting, you know, liquidated and things like that, and then probably panic selling, thinking it's going a whole lot lower. For me, I haven't sold any any of my Bitcoin. I've already told you uh, I did sell 10% of my crypto way back when we were uh, near the fifty sort of thousand dollar mark, uh, and I'm simply keeping that money for any really big dips or the bear market uh, in the next cycle. That's what that's for. All right, so moving on. (sighs) How deep will the correction go? So that's what makes me wonder about, you know, how correct is uh, Glassnode? Because they've got a bit of a different story over here. So the previous correction on, well, not a different story, but just something to take in mind. The previous correction on Feb 22nd resulted in a pullback of 26%, while the one that followed Bitcoin's first foray into the $40,000 zone on January 8th was closer to 31% as the asset fell back below $30,000. A repeat of such corrections from the Bitcoin's most recent 60K high would result in prices dropping to somewhere between 45 and 42000 I don't think that's going to happen. I think that's highly unlikely. Like I said, Glassnode has shown that most of the coins that have been moving around and been sold and things like that, they're young coins, they're not old coins. And the, you know, wallets that have been holding Bitcoin for quite some time, they're actually increasing. It's just the dumb money coming in at the moment that's getting wrecked, unfortunately. And I don't like to call them dumb money because we all started there once upon a time. And I don't like to think of myself as ever being dumb money but look in all fairness I was dumb money at one stage you know I didn't understand when to sell and things like that I've never leveraged trade I don't think I ever will I just I think it's too hard and I'd rather do the investment route you don't have to worry about getting liquidated but there are other issues what we that we're going to have a look at very very shortly but there you go can the correction actually make it down to 42,000? Or let's go 45,000. Let me know down below in the comments below how low do you think this correction is going to go? I don't think it's going to go much lower at all, but I've been proven wrong before and I can guarantee I'll be proven wrong again. I don't claim to know everything. Anyone who says they know exactly what price is something's going to, just be wary of that person. That is a guess and it could be a really educated guess. But in the end, it is a guess. No one truly knows. If they really did know, they would just, yeah, they'd be able to long and short the absolute backside out of the market and that own every Bitcoin. Who wouldn't do that if they knew exactly what was going to happen? All right, moving on to a story that I brought you the other day about refinance. Seems like it might have been a bit of FUD. All right, the refinance community was taken ablaze today following tweets on behalf of Alameda Research refuting the partnership uh, release from last week. So I told you that there was talk that uh, Alameda Research bought $20 million worth of uh, refinance. Turns out that's not quite true. So Sam Trabuco, a quantitative cryptocurrency trader, part of the Alameda Research team, 
took it to Twitter today to reveal that the company is in no way affiliated with Reef Finance. This came as a shock to the community following a market-wide announcement last week that the latter had invested $20 million in Reef as a strategic placement and future communal in, uh, initiatives. All right, so we go down here and it seems what happened was they only agreed to an over-the-counter trade uh, from Reef, but apparently the Reef team allegedly backed off. So seems it hasn't happened and I... I suspect that the Reef team have probably put that news out because it would have been bullish news, but for whatever reason weren't happy to sell, which is a little bit sneaky of them if they did that. Again, I'm not sure exactly what happened in the background, but you know, don't go tweeting about stuff until it's actually done would be uh, my advice. Still pretty bullish about Reef, but you know, that's really poor PR uh, on their behalf if they went and did that. And this is going to hurt. Let's have a look. Let's go over here. What's happened to Reef since? All right, 119. I'm going to say they've probably been hit pretty hard. And people are probably being a little bit annoyed with that. There we go, down 20%. So, yep, still up over the last 14 days, which is good. But people would be pretty annoyed to find out that that wasn't true. And look, this could get worse before it gets better. So, for anyone who's involved in Reef Finance, you know, whoever's in charge of PR and social networking and all the rest of it, you probably want to tell them to, you know, get that sorted because that kind of stuff is only going to hurt that project. It's not going to improve it in any way, shape or form. Maybe in the very, very short term it might help them, but in the long term it won't. People will just get jacked from them and they'll leave the project. All right. Nearly, nearly 40 billion of the latest round of direct stimulus checks could be spent on Bitcoin and stocks according to a new survey. The research by Mizuho Securities estimates that of the 380 billion total, close to 10% could be used to purchase the two asset types. Nearly two in five of Americans expecting to receive checks in the coming days anticipated using a portion of them to invest. Bitcoin is expected to account for 60% of the total invested, so that's bullish for the market if it turns out to be true, which could add uh, as much as 3% to the cryptocurrency's market value, according to uh, Mizuho Securities. Oh, that's very, very interesting. I mean, you know, if you're getting this money and you don't actually need, to su need it to survive, now if you need it to survive to pay rent and everything else, then please use that money for that. Don't go and spend it on anything else. But if it literally is just kind of spare money, yeah, investing it probably wouldn't be a bad way. Now, whether you go the stock route or the Bitcoin route or Ethereum or, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do, you know, make your own, my own mind up and make sure you do some research before you just simply go and chuck it in. But it will be very, very interesting to see how much of that goes into Bitcoins and into the markets in general because, you know, it's interesting times at the moment and there's a lot of talk about some people saying now is not the time to invest, you know, in stocks at least. And then there's also people saying the same about cryptocurrencies, actually. They think it's overpriced and getting ready to tumble any day. But again, people are saying the same thing about stocks. So who knows exactly what's going to happen. Me, I personally think as long as they're printing money, uh, stocks continue to go up and Bitcoin continues to go up. And when they stop printing money, that will be the interesting time. I'm not sure what happens. There is still a bullish case that if they stop printing money, because there's still so much of it, that people still want to get into Bitcoin. But look, chances are, as soon as they stop printing money, that there probably will be some kind of sell-off. It's just whether that will be the start of the new bear market or whether it'll just be a blip, you know, sort of on the radar, as they would say. Right, last but not least, this is a bit disappointing and disturbing. So a number of DeFi-related projects on the Binance Smart Chain, including PanSwap and Cream Finance, are under a DNS hijack attack. PancakeSwap, the largest and most popular decentralized cryptocurrency exchange and automated market maker on Binance Smart Chain, might have had its DNS hijacked. Cream Finance is also under attack. In a tweet shared minutes ago, and this is a a little bit old, so it's at least a couple of hours old. PancakeSwap's official account revealed that the platform might have had its DNS or domain name system hijacked. Until we are able to confirm this is not the case, do not use the site. We will confirm ASAP in the meantime. 
better be safe than sorry. So don't go using Pancake, Pancake Swap at the moment or Cream Finance because someone might have actually hijacked the domain name. So you might, you know, think you're going to the right site and you're going to a scam site. If they, if you have used it and for whatever reason they're asking for your seed details and things like that, do not provide it ever. They would never ask you for that. Not in any way, shape, or form would they ever ask you for that kind of stuff. So please be aware. You know, this is yeah it's such a dangerous space sometimes and it's scary to think that you know someone could go and hijack the actual domain name themselves so yeah be careful be aware these are the dangers of cryptocurrencies at the moment and there's plenty of them and you know with fairly large you know projects like pancake swap uh and even cream finance so yeah disturbing and i hope that no one out there has been burnt by that and yeah Best of luck and stay safe. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty good on you if you're on that gain train at the moment. Most people are probably down a little bit, at least overall. There's definitely individual projects that have probably done well. But overall, chances are you're probably not on the gain train. But if they, if you are, thumbs up to you and well done. And I'll see you next time.